Since I released my videos about updating and working with Excel tables from Power Automate, I got this question quite a few times on how can we work with the CSV files. So basically, if you have CSV file, how we can add records, how we can update the content inside it, and questions like that. I believe updating a CSV file is not the main question. The main question is that if you read the content of the CSV file, can we convert it to a JSON array so that we can process it and we can work with this content? So if we can solve that problem, probably there is nothing else to talk about, although I'm thinking that maybe I can release another video to show you exactly how to read the CSV, how to make changes, and how to update it, or basically push the changes back to the CSV file. But in this video, we want to look into the different options that you have that you can get the content from a CSV file and convert it into a JSON array so that you can work with it. Let's get into it. If you have been as cheap as I am, most probably you have looked for free resources or free ways to do the conversion between a CSV file to JSON. Yes, there are lots of ways to do that. And I've seen quite a few efforts towards doing this on YouTube or forums and different places. And they all rely on basically reading the content, splitting it line by line, and then splitting it comma by comma so that they can capture the rows and columns. As much as I want to say, yes, that works, but the reality is that it doesn't. Because all these guys do, they work with something like this. For example, they have the header, they have the values, and types are very simple. So basically, if you really open a file like this in Notepad, you get a content like this that is not much of a challenge to split it and basically convert it into a JSON object and it's all good. But most probably, if you think this is good, you have never met a qualified software tester in your entire career. Because when those guys test your solution, they don't feed a file like this. They set up a file like this, and then they give it to your solution. You see the difference? All these delimiters that here are comma, they are part of the sentences now. There are some special characters, and there are some double quotes, and I will tell you what it does. When we save this file as CSV, we get something like this here. So headers are fine, but all of a sudden, because this is the content from Alireza, has some special characters in it, like double quote, it encloses the entire thing in double quote. And it also duplicates these double quotes inside it. So for this one, if you just want to split by comma, good luck with that one. This one is even more entertaining because this one, it has just one comma. And for the CSV logic to understand that this is one column, it just encloses the entire thing in double quote. Again, if you want to split by comma, it's not going to actually consider that this entire thing is just one field. And last one is a little bit worse. So basically something like this is still a valid CSV, but if you want to have a solution to work with it, you really need to handle that. Now, what I'm trying to do is that I want to pass something like this first and then something like this to encode in CSV parser and see if it can actually hold up to our expectation. Simple logic is that if you pay a dollar value for a service just to do this conversion, it better be good. So if you want to follow me, let's go to Encodian and get a free subscription. Simply go to Encodian.com and click on products, and under products, you will find floor. I click on this, and this is a long page, don't even bother, click directly on activate free trial. Just put your first name, last name, company name, any dummy thing, just put an email address, and just make sure you don't change this, because there are some other services, just keep the floor, and then click on submit. As soon as you submit, you get an email like this. And this email contains your API key. Once you have that key, you're going to start working with Encodium. Now let's take it to Power Automate and put this bad boy to work. 
Assuming that you are doing it for the first time, let's click on Create. And we want to create an instant cloud flow. And I just give it a name. Encodian test. And I want to manually start the flow and I click on Create. So the flow is created. I need to create a new variable. Right? Initialize variable. And I call it CSV sample. Type is going to be string. And I need to put the initial value inside it. I have my file here. Let me open the sample one, which is the easy one. Open with Notepad. And there we go. So this is the content that we have. I just go back to my flow and I paste this guy here. I save it so I have the CSV inside one variable. Right after that, I need to use parse CSV. And you will see it right under Encodian with Encodian logo. And I pick parse CSV. And because this is the first time that I'm using this, it's asking me for a connection name. I call it Encodian Connector. And for the API key, you get the key that you received in your email. We paste it here, and I click on Create. No thanks, don't save it, we're good. And as soon as you do it, it creates a connector. Regardless at the moment, it says, okay, give us the content. And the content is already in this variable. So if I click on this, I can get it from the CSV sample and the parse CSV will do the job. The main thing is that this one now gives you tons of options. So basically you can specify your own column header. You can specify what is a delimiter by default, it's comma, but if it is separated by tab, by anything else, by all means you can do that. Skip the first line, sure, because the first line does not contain the data, it's just our column header, so we are good. And I click on Save. Now let's see if we can put it inside a Compose and examine it and see what we get out of it. So let me just put this guy here. I get the content from the Encodian CSV data that says CSV data, the parsed CSV data in JSON format. Keep it in mind that it is still a string. So let me just save it. And we can test it. Manually run this test. And I click on Continue. Run flow. Done. Let's see what we got. It's still making the call because it's a remote call to a different server. And then if I go to my Compose, you will see this is the JSON object that we got. Great. But still, we are missing one thing. And that is still its string, and we need to actually convert it to a JSON array. To do that, I click on Edit, and I go to Add New Step. I say Initialize Variable. And for this one, let me just rename it initialize CSV JSON, and I call it CSV JSON here. The type this time is an array, right? The only thing that we need to do, we should be able to get either the content of this Compose or the content from this CSV data directly from parse CSV and convert it into a JSON array. To do that, I click on Expression, and I use my famous JSON expression, and for the value that it's expecting, I click back on dynamic content, and I get the CSV data from parse CSV. Bingo. Oh gosh, how much I hate this IntelliSense. All right, and I click OK. If you really want to see how that expression looks like, it looks like here. Okay, so we have the JSON and the output from the CSV, whatever, whatever that is there. We just accept it the way it is, right? We're good. Now, let's see if we can actually get the content and put it inside this CSV JSON array. If we can do that, it's a valid JSON array. So let's test it, save and test, and I click on Run Flow, done. And there we go. 
if I come here, you actually have a JSON array. But this one was the easy one. Let me throw the real challenge at it. And that real challenge, I need to go to edit and I say initialize variable. I need to replace this guy with sample2. So I open it again with notepad. And this one is where it's supposed to work properly. And I just throw this guy here. And I just say save. Now we need to compare the values. So if I just say test now, and I say test, run flow, done. And we're good. Just look at this. So as you can see, the name is fine, age is fine, right? But this is the content from, all right, it included the double code and it included the double code. And it exactly picked the entire content from this file. Let me show you. So this is the content that it's supposed to pick and it perfectly did the job. Second one has just one comma in between. It has a comma in between them and it perfectly picked comma and it included it as a part of the comment, which is perfect. And the last one has two double quotes and two single quotes. So let me see the last one. And yes, it has one double quote here, one double quote here, and two single quotes inside it. So it works perfectly fine. So basically, Encodian does its job. Now the question is that if we should buy it or we make our own component. And here are some answers. If you look into the Encodian and into the available packages, okay, you have free trial, which is zero. You have standard, which you can make 500 actions per month, which is very reasonable. And you have the midsize and blah, blah, and all the other packages. Here is a question. Think about building something with this capability only to handle your CSV. These guys provide tons of other services. I would say I still go for this because building and maintaining a custom-made solution for something that is already there in the market is going to cost any company a lot more than this amount, plus the hassle of communicating, taking care of the tickets, and all those things. So I would say if a solid solution like this is there, don't hesitate. Just go and buy it. But hold on a second. Am I promoting a third-party company? This was not a sponsored video to promote Encodian. So everything I said and I presented in this video was my own personal experience with Encodian. And to be honest, I really like the work that they do. Uh, in the next video, I will show you how we can use whatever we learned today to update a CSV file and push the changes back to the file itself. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.